Under the sea there are animal forests, some made of glass, sometimes hanging from flesh and calcareous skeleton trees. We find that too. Okay, look closely, look better. There, hanging on a coral stem, there's a baby shark. Inside an egg is a nutrient sac that enables growth to completion. Before entering the big pool, this extremely rare scene was captured at nearly 250 meters deep near an underwater garden. A vast area that forms absolutely surreal landscapes, which can only be found in the great depths, in the abyss, and which were still completely unknown just decades ago. When you explore the deep sea using autonomous rovers, the vast majority of the time, the ground and the terrain are bare, often simply covered with a strange mud. And life in the great depths is so sparse that you can spend hours moving near the bottom and all in all only encounter a few large creatures. But sometimes, strange forests of twisted trees suddenly appear by the hundreds in this vast desert of sand and mud, thousands of meters deep. Don't be fooled by looks. These landscapes of colorful tropical forests, which seem to have suddenly sunk underwater due to a landslide, are not covered with plants. None of the creatures you'll see thriving here today are plants. These trees, rising above the surface as if seeking sunlight, have digestive systems. Their bodies are spongy, and their branches, made of odd flesh-like tissue, are sometimes covered with tiny, digesting tentacles. If all these astonishing creatures covering these vast expanses are animals, it's because in these oppressive depths it couldn't be any other way. Here, darkness reigns supreme, and the sun's rays, even if they manage to reach this deep, are far too weak for photosynthesis to occur. Therefore, plants can't survive. And that's why all the extremely diverse species that rise above the ground. In a profusion as splendid as it is grotesque of colors and arabesques, contrasting with the pitch black night of the surrounding darkness, are part of the animal kingdom. And almost all of them are members of two very particular pillars, sponges and corals. From the ocean's great depths, sponges are among the strangest animals beneath our planet's surface. They lack eyes, a mouth, a heart, and a brain. And yet, they are remarkable animals, both simple and efficient, and within them, each cell is capable of creating the entire body. This gives them a kind of superpower, the ability to regenerate and regrow from just a few small original pieces. Wherever the conditions are right, in every ocean around the world, sponges are there. They embed themselves, superficially burrowing into the rock to anchor and attach, and they've been doing this for over 600 million years. And the fact that a species without a heart or a brain has existed for so long is definitely good news for fools. Sponges living hundreds of meters deep differ from surface ones because their bodies are oddly rigid, not soft. If you could touch these structures with your fingers, you would find them almost solid. In fact, sponges have been discovered several hundred meters under the sea whose skeleton is made of glass. Unlike their surface relatives, whose relatively soft bodies are made of a kind of collagen fiber. Here, deep sea sponges build a complex framework with their tissues, which allow them to digest matter drifting in the current, resting on a skeleton made of silica. They live only in deep oceans. These tall glass houses, often several meters high, can remain for years, even after the animal dies, like fragile cathedrals, distorted before eventually collapsing. Another oddity for feeding. Sponges, when they are near the surface, regardless of their shape or size, can pump 10,000 times their own volume of water in a single day. They do this to filter bacteria and tiny plankton from the water for food. However, many builders and engineers of the strange who live deep underwater still maintain a filter feeding lifestyle, content to recycle drifting nutrients. Over the past 20 years, dozens of species have also been discovered, often at depths of more than 1,000 meters that have become carnivorous. Over time, their bodies have become covered with microscopic hooks, with barbs capable of catching tiny fish or small crustaceans. Once caught, they become trapped as if in a spider's web, before being wrapped in a thin membrane inside which they will be slowly digested. In other words, if you're a tiny shrimp, landing on one of these branched arms could be a death sentence, because some of these trees are carnivores that could very well devour you. 
always seeking to optimize their surface area exposed to currents, some sponge species have developed puzzling shapes, like the sponge. Harp, which the teams from the Ambari Institute discovered anchored in the soft mud of the seafloor at a depth of about 3,300 meters. But don't be fooled by the extraordinary shape of this harp, because the little tune this sponge plays is one of murder. Each of its branches is covered with hooks that allow it to catch small animals drifting in the currents before wrapping them up and swallowing them. As for the little balls that pass by at each end, they are used for reproduction and are filled with packets of sperm, waiting to be released. This flower-shaped light fixture is not a plant, it's an animal, a carnivorous sponge. And for the tiny animals unlucky enough to land there, these spheres covered with microscopic harpoons also mean death. But if there's something perhaps even more surprising than the existence of all these carnivorous sponges, it's the fact that we find so many healthy corals at such depths. Because if there's one place on Earth where you wouldn't expect to find them, it's in icy waters and total darkness. At 2,500 meters deep, sometimes reaching the abyssal plain, it must be said that when we think of coral reefs, we often imagine warm shallow waters bathed in light. Except here, we're in a different world. In fact, the deepest reef-building corals we've managed to find were at a depth of 172 meters. Beyond that, the algae that live in symbiosis with tropical reef corals and provide them with energy through photosynthesis eventually die. Deep-sea corals have lost their symbiotic algae and often their colors as a result. No ray of light reaches down. They feed by catching organic matter drifting with the currents. To reach these impressive sizes, all the corals you see here started from a single larva, a polyp that, after anchoring itself to the seabed, began to bud, dividing into thousands of clones that together built a main trunk, a limestone skeleton covered with a layer of flesh from which what we are tempted to call branches began to grow and became covered with polyps that look like miniature anemones, and which, like so many mouths, will capture food drifting in the water column. To supply the entire organism with nutrients via a digestive system connecting all the polyps. Here it exists, often beneath kilometers of black water, where temperatures rarely top 4 degrees and perpetual darkness prevails. Luxurious coral gardens that don't need to rely on sunlight to grow. Deep sea corals are soft and flexible, unlike surface corals, allowing them to grow several meters tall, constantly swaying under the current's power. Just like this species of bamboo coral, whose stalk regularly rises more than three meters above the surface. As with sponges, corals have acquired a great diversity of shapes through evolution. Some are branched, others take on the appearance of a fan or a rigid whip. As for the splendid octocorals, having flexible spiral branches allows them to catch food present in the current from all directions. And the craziest thing about all this is that these surreal landscapes of animal forests with tentacles waving in the ocean current like so many fingers trying to catch the unwary who dare to venture here, have existed since time immemorial. Consider that the growth of these organisms is so slow that it is estimated they often need several years to grow even one centimeter. So, in a landscape like this, almost all of the coral and sponge groves you see are several hundred to sometimes thousands of years old. And a sponge with such astonishing dimensions as this one, which is three and a half meters wide and two meters high, is about the size of a van, most certainly started growing before the great pyramids of Egypt were built. To get a direct sense of these colonies, observe the ground where you'll often find limestone piles, sometimes dozens of meters thick, created by the ongoing buildup of solid sponge and coral remains, and on which life tirelessly continues to grow. Because of these unusual branched animals without centralized nervous systems, when a soft branch, after bending under the constant battering of the current, finally breaks, it can start growing again at ground level. And so, each colony is in a way constantly reborn from its own ashes. Some believe certain deep reefs have essentially grown atop themselves and thrived continuously for over 40,000 years. 
But don't go thinking that the entire deep sea is covered with these underwater forest landscapes. These images are a bit misleading, in the sense that they often only show you the places richest in life that we have discovered. And although such landscapes can be found in all the oceans of the world, these vast gatherings of living creatures, from 200 meters to over 2,500 meters deep, nearly always occur in the same location where it is possible for corals or sponges to cling and where a current rich in nutrients regularly sweeps the seafloor. Rarely occurring conditions. Only on volcano slopes, seamounts, canyon sides or plateau edges and on the continental slopes whose features are almost always swept by significant water movements while providing a surface hard enough to cling to and it's only in these regions that you can observe gigantic communities sometimes spreading over areas of several hectares. As these unusual forests developed, a colorful and diverse fauna moved in. Because these forests, in the midst of the vast stretches of black water all around where life is much more sparse, are hotspots of biodiversity, oases of life. Worms, anemones, spiders like starfish, brittle stars, shrimp, crabs or lobsters, and other fish. Deep sea creatures are only a fraction of those that benefit from sponge and deep sea coral colonies. They often climb these structures to use them as vantage points, the deep sea creatures, giving them better access to the current. Some glass sponges serve as shelters or nurseries. Creatures cling to them and climb them to live, hide, access food, protect themselves, reproduce, or eat them. Sometimes these huge structures are on the menu too. For corals or glass sponges, the greatest threat often comes from certain nearby starfish. This one, observed at a depth of 2,000 meters on top of a coral stalk, is most likely feeding on it. At 2,230 meters deep, a sponge's branches are almost completely covered by actinophore species adapted to live on other organisms. By wrapping around its host, the tenophore can extend its garland-like tentacles into the current to hunt while conserving energy. Some reef dwellers elevate these association strategies. For example, Venus's flower basket glass sponges have formed a fascinating relationship with small crustaceans. Because these sponges often house a pair of shrimp that having grown inside have usually become too large to get out and so they are bound to the fate of the sponge for the rest of their lives. And these shrimp, which in exchange for food clean the structure from the inside, are born, live as a couple, and die in their shelter, which has become a kind of prison that ensures their protection. In short, their vertical structures rise above the seafloor like twisted monuments, giving engineers of the deep sea landing and observation spots. New playgrounds rich in possibilities for a whole colorful fauna that finds in the folds or on the branches of these tree-like structures, shelter or refuge. Shelter or a home for a night or a lifetime compared to the vast muddy expanses and the sparse life of the deep ocean. These gardens of sponges and corals are inhabited cities, cities of flesh and worms, teeming with shadows and blurry shapes, sneaking, fighting, warring or making love. We saw it from the start, nurseries where creatures lay eggs or bring their young. There are even flowers that aren't really flowers, called feather stars or sometimes sea lilies. These strange creatures, with their elongated bodies and crown of feathery arms, are in place, motionless. We call them starfish and, well, we call them the flowers of the bay and the sea. Perched like this, feather stars optimize their access to the current. And with the help of their arms, which in some species can reach up to half a meter in span, they form a kind of net that allows them to catch the organic matter drifting by. Sometimes, you can even come across feather stars swimming in the water column, where they strangely resemble flying plants flapping their branches, even though they are animals. More rarely. Still, it happens that they fall from several hundred meters deep onto gatherings of feather stars. All you can see are beams, spotlights, and autonomous rovers stretching endlessly. An ophiroid, a creature that is to a starfish what a professional gymnast is to my grandmother. Because, unlike starfish, whose thick skin covering them lacks flexibility, ophiroids have flexible skin, covering a network of extremely supple muscles that allow their arms to twist sideways in every direction, 
And even though these arms often break, they almost always regenerate slowly afterward. Sometimes it... You might encounter ophiaroids waving and twisting their arms to soar for a few minutes in the water column before landing on the top of sponges or corals around which they twist themselves in order to rise above the bottom and take advantage of the stronger currents that are richer in nutrients. As for this inextricable ball of intertwined arms, which evokes the roots of a tree without a trunk moving around by feel, and which might make you think that one of your worst nightmares has just materialized. It's an innocent Gorgonocephalus, an organism that can be observed down to 800 meters deep, and it has stolen the title of strangeness itself. Gorgonocephalus, which can live up to 35 years and, in some species, reach a wingspan of more than one and a half meters, feed by spreading out in the current. Their branched arms, equipped with tiny hooks, allow them to capture prey passing nearby. And when a significant catch is made, the branch-shaped arm coils up to bring the meal to the mouth located in the center. The inhabitants of the abyss do not speak, but they have a lot to tell us. They are a mirror for our species. And the way we will or will not be able to protect these species so far from the surface will reveal our dark or bright side. Because although they are deeply buried under hundreds of thousands of meters of black water, these ecosystems are not isolated from the world. Today, in many regions of the world, they are even threatened because they are home to many fish, crustaceans, and mollusks. These large colonies are often mistaken for that and harmed by deep sea trawling. A blind fishing method, as stupid as it is barbaric, which involves using giant weighted nets to plow the ocean floor. Like a bulldozer, it rips everything out in its path, leaving behind nothing but death and desolation. And where, just a few hours earlier, there was a rich ecosystem full of creatures that have survived longer than the Roman Empire, there is now almost nothing left. In terms of good ideas, it's a bit like deciding to uproot all the trees in an orchard just to harvest its fruit. All of this happens unnoticed, but it's still important. Consider that. It is estimated that, on a global scale, more than half of known coral species are found in cold, deep, and dark waters. So, in terms of diversity, these deep-sea forests often have nothing to envy from those in surface waters. In just a few decades, an area equivalent to six times the size of Europe has been scraped from the ocean floor. Altogether, all the fish catches generated by these practices, which involve butchering forests of millennia-old animals, account for barely 0.2% of the total volume of global fish catches. Definitely, the fact that a species without hearts or brains has existed for 600 million years is good news for fools. Think about that the next time you go for a swim. These surreal landscapes aren't as far from you as you might think. Beneath the surface, just a few kilometers away, there are sometimes delightfully strange worlds that can only be visited with the help of machines. And they are inhabited by creatures that seem to have been drawn from the wild dreams of tormented minds and straight out of another planet, when in reality they are only a few hundred maybe a few thousand meters deep at most, right beneath us, infinitely closer to us than a journey into space. It's fascinating. Have you ever seen anything like that? I've never seen anything like this anywhere else. Wow. These are incredibly beautiful animals and they're spread out. Yes, I can imagine. And I think they come out at night and they're trapped during the day.